Hey everybody, it's the Jack here with my boy Alex. What's up? And we're gonna keep the whole Aeronautica thing rolling with a how to play video. Let's get to it. The first thing you, you're gonna do when you play Aeronautica Imperialis is first is you're gonna set up your miniatures. So the good rule of thumb for at least for the dogfight scenario and probably most others is you need to put your fighter in a starting hex three at least within three from the edge of the board. So I'm gonna put mine aggressively up here. And I'm actually gonna kinda hang back. I'm gonna put mine right there. He's just gonna chill. He's gonna play cool. Sweet. The other thing you do is you're going to set your altitude and how fast you're gonna be going on your first turn. So it can be whatever number you like. Yep. High, low, whatever you wanna do. As long as within your uh, stats of your vehicle, of course. After you've done this, the overall uh, turn structure is the game is broken up into several phases. Your first one is choose maneuvers. The second one is your initiative. The third one is tailing fire. Fourth one is movement. The fifth one is your firing phase. And the sixth one is the end phase. Let's look at the first one. All right. So the first one you're going to do is choose maneuvers. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, so for maneuvers, basically you have to choose uh, maneuvers that your planes can do. Like for instance, my Thunderbolt here can do uh, one through six of maneuvers, which are here on this handy dandy chart that we've got right here, versus the DACA jet over there can only do one through five. So we're going to choose one of our tokens here. We're going to choose a maneuver that we think we can handle. Like for instance, I'm gonna secretly choose this and place it down. Then DAC is gonna take this stack of tokens and choose one that he wants. All right, then we move on to the initiative phase, which is where we roll off to see who will go first for the purposes of the turns. So, All good right. luck, sir. All right. Hot sixes. Oh, okay. Or I'll roll the same thing you roll will. Roll the same thing? Very okay. sweet. I'm very consistent. And then after that, we choose uh, who goes. The person who wins the initiative roll off chooses who they want to go first. Either it could be them or the other player, and that uh, affects both the movement phase and the shooting phase. Yeah. Yeah, the firing phase. Yeah, so it's very important to think ahead of time if you want to have the initiative and do things first, or if you want to give that to your opponent, but also make them to make the first move so you can react better, right? Exactly. Okay. So there also is, after the movement phase, there would be the tailing fire phase, which we currently are not set up for because we're set up in a battle. But let's say we were in a tailing fire scenario. In fact, we, why don't we just set that yeah, up Yeah, let's real just quick. set it up. All right. Uh, we'll move our tokens here. Yep. Um, All right. So let's say that my... Thunderbolt is four squares behind your uh, DACA jet here. So what this would instigate is a uh, tailing fire because of the fact that I am within his rear arc and uh, I, he is within my front arc. And how you determine arcs in this game is you take uh, the front 60 degrees, so right here, and then you follow along this line to make sure that he is wholly encapsulated within it and same thing back from his plane, like that. As you can see, I'm thoroughly in it, very much in the center, and then I would be able to basically take a free round of shooting at his DACA jet. Which is pretty, which is pretty important, because that is, it means if you position yourself right, you get a free turn of shooting, right? Pretty much, with yeah. all your guns. Yeah, you get an extra turn of shooting with that uh, particular aircraft, which is huge. Of course, in order to do this, you have to make sure that the height of your aircraft is at within one of the other enemy aircraft that you're firing at, because then you won't be able to hit them, which we'll get to in the firing phase, of course, but it's just like normal shooting, uh, and it's just something to watch out for. So in the movement phase, one thing you'll do is you will flip over and basically reveal what your maneuver, what maneuvers you chose, right? So in this case, I chose number one. So each aircraft has, a, you know, they, they follow the same sequence whenever you're about to do a move action. Mm -hmm. First thing you do is uh, you can throttle, or basically what throttling is, is it, it just adjusts your speed. If you, um, let's say you have a throttle of two, yep. you can either s increase your speed by two or decrease it by two. Yep. Uh, assuming you don't go, you cannot voluntarily go under your minimum speed. So like for instance, you put your deck of jet down with a speed of what? Uh, with a speed of four. Okay, and then you might, I might increase that up to six if you wanted to. I could. I could do that. Or I could even just increase it by one, or I can decrease it. So let's say I decide to decrease it because you're kind of close. So that's something I can do. 
So I would do that. And now after you've basically done your throttling, uh, what you would then, the next thing you would do is you would actually move and maneuver. And that's where you're going to go ahead and you're going to do what it says on these sheets. So here's the good, ex ex oh yeah, there you go. So what you're going to do is you're going to do what you see on these sheets. So now granted, I selected one, number one, which is like the most straightforward thing. It's you move forward and then you pivot. So what's interesting to note about this game is you can move after, like from here to here, you just have to move at least one space. Yep. You can either, here's a good example, so I'm gonna go three spaces, so I can either go one, two, three, and keep facing forward, or I can pivot, just like it says here, right? Or another thing I can do is I can go one, two, I could then pivot, right? And then three. Totally, yeah. So. Or if even, you want to do something more crazy, like for instance, say I didn't pick it, but say I had picked number six and I was going at six speed here, uh, I would be able to do the stoop. So I'd rotate to go this way, and then I could go this way, and then I could go this way, the remaining four spaces, and just yeah. end up crazy far away. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's one thing to remember is you're not locked in like these maneuvers, or they're almost more of a you have to adhere to them, but they're almost kind of more of a guideline. Like yeah. you don't, it's not a hard thing. Like you don't only get to move like one hex and then shift or just go forward and then turn. Um, these things can happen uh, with different values before or after them. You just have to move at least one before you do something else. Yep. You just have that mandatory one, one hex movement. Um, and then you have to move at least as far as whatever you set your dial to. So you can't set your dial to five and then only move four. You have to go five. Yeah. How you divvy out those, that five hexes of movement is up to you, um, but you have to at least move the five. Definitely, yeah. And at the end of movement, there is finally the altitude move, which is where you can change your height, which is very important for the shooting part of the, uh, or the firing phase. Um, and you can either change your altitude if you move one to four squares or uh, hexes. If you move one to four hexes, you can change your altitude by one. If you move uh, more than that, up to nine hexes, you can change your altitude by one or two, which is very important because of the fact that, that can make it so that you shift very rapidly and make it hard for opponents to keep up with you. Yeah. So generally speaking, the faster uh, the faster your plane is, and the faster you're moving, uh, the much quicker you're going to be able to adjust your altitude. Yeah. Uh, which is, like I said, like he was saying, is a really big deal because you, um, you really need to be at a similar or a close altitude to be able to effectively shoot at something. And if for tailing fire, it's really stringent. You really have to be, uh, you have to be within one. Like you cannot be any higher. If you're any higher or any lower, um, then you nothing happens. So another thing worth mentioning is whenever you move, if you, whenever you change levels, if you go up which is to increase your altitude. So that's, yep, this way. It's so like you went from a three to a four. Like if you went to, from a three to a four, right? Let's put it the right way. So I went from a three to a four. What's gonna happen is, since you're going up, your, your, your aircraft is going to, in a sense, involuntarily slow down a little bit, yep. right? So you, you would then dial your speed back by at least one. Yep. So the reason this is important, though, is because you can, so while you can't intentionally make yourself go, you know, throttle below your minimum speed or throttle above your maximum speed, whenever you're changing height, it does, it can in fact push you, for in this case, mm -hmm. below your minimum speed. This is important because if at any point when you're doing this, if you're going up, uh, you're increasing your altitude, if at any point in the game, you're speed goes below your minimum speed, you immediately begin to stall. And this is important in a later phase of the game. That's correct, yeah. Because if you stall, things can get out of hand and you can spin out. Yep. And you will just start dropping. Yeah, and that would be bad. That is bad. There also is another risk if you happen to decrease uh, your height. Like, for instance, if I went down from 3 to a 2 here, in the right direction. <laughs> right. And let's say I was going speed 6, which is my maximum speed. That would make it so I would actually be going speed seven, which puts me at a risk of breaking up. Now, this doesn't affect the actual movement, much like the climbing thing, 
it doesn't change what distance I'm able to go, it just changes the fact that what my speed currently is and puts me in danger of breaking up. Now, breaking up isn't super duper bad if you really need that extra speed boost and you really need to drop that thing, but it's something to watch out for because of the fact that it can be saved with a three plus, but on a one or two, your airplane suffers a catastrophic failure and immediately suffers one damage. So, which would be really bad on your nimble little Dakajet. Yes. <laughs> for example, a Dakajet only has two structure, which is basically two wounds. Yeah. So it can't do that very much, or it will just literally break apart and then just die on the table. Exactly. Uh, so that's it. so. Remember, if you, at any point, like if you're going up, you're going to have to decrease your speed, and if you go too low on your speed, you risk stalling. On the flip side, if you go down levels, right, yep. you go down in altitude, you will increase your speed by one. And if this exceeds your threshold, your max speed, you risk breaking up and taking damage, just, just flat out. Yep. So in the firing phase, that's the best part. That's where you're going to shoot all your guns, hopefully. Hopefully you have a target. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna shoot your guns and you're gonna try to down enemy aircraft. So easily, probably the most exciting part because it's going to be all about rolling dice. Yep. Um, so, whenever you're firing with an aircraft, you have the same sequence of steps. The first thing you're going to do is targeting. So that's very straightforward. You're going to look at like who's shooting and you're going to see who they're shooting at. That's yep. targeting. Straight, you know, you're going to see how far away they are. You're going to figure all that out. Yeah, you're going to figure out uh, how many hexes away they are. Like, for instance, right now, we are five hexes away from each other, which is at medium range, um, which we'll get to in a second. But also, it's important to note what fire arc you're firing from. Like, for instance, the front arc, which is obviously this front side of the hex, which draws a diagonal line out here, which we've kind of talked about before, which means that, yes, I'm within your front firing arc of all of your weapons because they all fire. But some uh, planes have different things, like where they can fire out their side arcs, which are these two sides right here on the right-hand side going out and the left-hand side. And then also there's the rear arc, which is, is fairly similar to the front arc, but it's right behind you. And you have to make sure that to maximize whatever arcs that your plane fires from. A lot of these smaller fighter jets that were like the Thunderbolt and the Daka jet we're using here all are all facing. forward facing. But uh, some of the bigger bombers and stuff like that have uh, turrets to fire either out the rear or out both sides or something like that. So you have to make sure to watch out for that. All right, so next up we have the firepower, which is very important to look at the stats of the weapons of your planes. Like, for instance, here I've got a Thunderbolt Fury, which happens to have the Avenger Bolt Cannon on it. Now, firepower works in a very specific way because of the fact that this determines how many dice you roll to hit your target. And range is a huge thing of that. For instance, short range is one through four hexes, which we are just outside of, and five to seven hexes is medium range. And then you have long range, which is eight to 10 hexes. So as you can see, that's most of the table here. But the basic deal with the uh, Avenger Bolt Cannon is that short range, it would fire three shots, and at medium range, it fires seven shots, which is huge. Now, in this, in Aeronautica Imperialis, everything hits on a five plus unless there's a few modifiers in play that affect it now they're almost always negative modifiers if your decajet was different by one altitude from mine i would have a minus one to hit it. if it's different by two i couldn't even hit it at all or if it were spinning and stall it'd also be minus one and all of these are cumulative with each other so if you got a spinning stalling spinning or stalling plane that's uh one altitude different than you you can't hit it at all no and so you're just gonna have to <laughs> move on with life um, but in this case, let's say we're like, you know, on the same thing. So I'd roll, hang on here, <laughs> roll these seven dice here and I hit it on five ups. All right, sweet. I hit you three times. Then we'd move on to the next phase, which would be the ammo, which since this happens to be a limited weapon because you can equip your uh, jets with special weapons, um, but this one does not have any special weapons. This is just an unlimited ammo weapon. So I hit you and then I roll to wound for damage. Uh, that would be a four up and I got two of them. Now this is also special because I also happen to roll a six, which on this particular weapon does extra damage, meaning that this does a total of uh, three whole points worth of damage. Now the deck of jet is unfortunately only two, so it's semi-wasted. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a cheap one. That so. gives you a dead deck of jet right there. And that's the, the basics of the phase. And basically uh, what you do is much like the movement phase where you're alternating uh, back and forth between the two players. You're also alternating these back and forth. Um, 
It is not like Apocalypse, though, where, like, you know, models that die may stick around or whatever. Once it's dead, it's out of the it's game. It's dead. Done. It's very much, yeah. it's, it's closer to 40k in the sense that when units die, they are dead. Yeah. That is that. Is that. They're off the yeah. board and they're not there anymore. But it's worth noting that some weapons, as you said, are better at different ranges. That's true. Um, like, my little Daka jet here is way better up close, whereas... All your stuff is obviously rocking it pretty hard in medium range. Yeah, medium range is really where the Imperial stuff really shines. So now you move on to the end phase. So in the end phase, you're gonna ch first thing you're going to do is check to s on your stalled aircraft. Each aircraft has a handling characteristic, which kind of gives you a general idea, a general overview of how maneuverable the plane is or how good the pilot is. This is important in this specific phase. Namely, because you need to roll a D6 and either meet or exceed that handling value. For example, this Thunderbolt has a handling value of a 3-up. That's correct. Whereas this Orc actually only has a handling value of a 4-up. Yep, and earlier you had him climb, so you should make sure and see if he can make it. Right? So let's say I roll, so I roll my dice. Oh, no. That's actually <laughs> perfect. So this is what would happen. So I failed this roll, yep. right? So what's going to happen is the aircraft is going to have some serious problems. It's going to fall into a spin. Yep. So the plane has gone up, it's stalled, and it is starting to spin out of control, and it is literally spiraling down and plumbing to the earth. So the next step in this phase, in your end phase, is you're gonna recover from a spin. Yep. Now, if your aircraft just went into a spin, right, so like mine just went into a spin, it doesn't mean I get to roll again and try to pull myself out. This is only for planes or aircraft that had started spinning out in a previous turn. So next turn, I would get another chance to roll this dice and bring it back. I would still be falling. Yep. <laughs> uh, I would get another chance to roll this dice and pull out of my spin. So that's an important thing to remember. Um, there is another step for recovering from a spin, but if you just started spinning out this turn, you, on the same turn, you can't do it. You have to wait till the next turn before you try to recover. Yeah, it's also important to note that spinning is really bad because of the fact that it has your airplane uh, facing in a random direction. You don't know what direction it's going to be facing in while it's spinning. And also, you can't do anything. You can't do any ace maneuvers. You can't fire. It's just sitting there spinning in the middle of the table. That's right. And that's actually, that, there's a risk to that, too. Because remember, with the way facing works, right? Like, if you, if you go into a spin and you're way on the edge of the board here, like, let's say you're way back here, it may not, if you, remember, you have to move at least one in a given direction. So if yeah. you pull out of that spin and you're facing this way, you're probably going to fly off the board. Probably, yeah. In fact, you will, because you have to move at least one. So yeah. it's risky. If you're near the table edge and you spin out, you could end up in a direction that literally just is going to automatically take you off the board. And if you go off the board for any reason, you're counted as a casualty. Because yeah. you've disengaged, you're out of the a a AOE, so you've, uh, you gotta, you're out. You're dead, you get the enemy your points. Yep, yeah. you, you've handed them points. So don't stall out, but especially don't stall out near, near the edge of the board. So the next step and the end step is determining tailing. So, what you'll do is players will go and they'll determine if any of the aircrafts are in position to fire in any aircraft in the tailing phase of the following turn. So, for instance, this would be an obvious, this is definitely tailing this. However, the important thing to know is that it has to be wholly within each uh, aircraft's cone. So, while this would be in, if I move this... Yeah, you, gotta, you actually got to go kind of a ways out. Here, this is only halfway within this cone, which means it's 100% not within tailing. Also, he's only halfway within my firing cone, so they have to be within both. So like here, this is good for both planes. They'll both be able to shoot, or this plane will be able to shoot uh, that plane. Yep. But over here, not so good. You gotta make sure to look at the lines and make sure that the firing arcs make sense. It's also important to note that even if he was in a perfect position, it would see like this is a this is a good spot here, right? Yeah. But remember, it's also really determines it, it's it's also dependent on where your opponent's tail is, and that's why they made a, a an important note about the rear arc because technically, if I'm here, yeah, I'm totally in your front arc. Yep. But you're not tailing me because my rear arc is way over here. Exactly. There's and that's nothing a, I could do about yeah, that. Yeah. So he wouldn't get the tailing fire. Now he'd still be able to maybe sideswipe me with the last cannon. But he will not be able. Uh, he would not be able to. This would not count as tailing. So after you determine tailing, that's the end of the turn. Yep. Right. And that that's it. That's literally the breakdown of just your basic. Seems pretty simple. Start to finish uh, turn. All right. So 
Um, but, it's, but it's Coda. How do we win this game? You I don't. don't. <laughs> I don't care about flying. I mean, flying planes and going pew 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 is great and all that. But I want to win. <laughs> ah, winning's overrated. And... <laughs> no, that is a good question, though. In fact, why don't you tell uh, to everybody, Axe, how how do you win? All right. Well, first off, a typical uh, round limit of Aeronautica Imperialis would be 12 turns. That's a lot of turns. It is a lot of turns. But there's also another stipulation. You enter the final phase of the game if uh, one of the forces and hits 25% uh, left of their uh, aircraft on the board. Okay, that's Points. reasonable. Yeah. Which, you know, would be, is not too bad with what comes in the box because of the fact that there's only like four to five models aside, which means pretty much if you got one plane left on the board, you knock down to 25%. Then you enter the final turn of the game, which is called the disengagement turn which is very similar to a lot of things that happen to have this particular uh, type of turn, which is basically where you have a turn to get out of dodge. Okay, so assuming all your planes are not dead, but you're at a certain point where it's pretty obvious that you're, you're losing, yeah. you, only have, you've, you, know, you only got 25% of your dudes left. Yeah. Um, so that's a disengagement turn. So that's basically a turn when you actually want to fly off the edge of the board? Yeah, so the basic deal is that if you fly off the edge of the board on any other turn, it's super bad. Like, if I was just like, Nat bros, I'm done with this, and fly off the board, I just gave you free points. Yay! I just gave you all the points for my plane because I flew off the board. However, during the disengagement turn, if I was like, if this guy is on damage, let's say, because somehow he's managed to stay behind your deck jet the whole time here, he could be like, nah, I'm good, and pull some crazy maneuver where he flies off the board. Now that scores you no points, so it stops you. So it denies you points, and let's say that I killed a similar amount of points that you killed to me, but you happen to have two planes left on the board, um, so that I could fly off and still get those points. However, if I am damaged, I can still fly off, but I still give you twenty-five percent of the points that I, normally you would have gotten. Okay, so if the plane's undamaged, then it's complete point denial. Yeah. I get nothing for it. You literally fly away. And you're like, haha, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, J.K. Bro, uh, don't tase me. <laughs> Uh, so, but if you are wounded at, um, really at, at all, then I at least, your opponent will still at least get a percentage. Yeah. They'll, get, they'll get a little bit, of, they'll get some points for it. Obviously, they didn't down the aircraft, so they don't get all of it, but they get something. But yeah, if you take off and nothing happened to you, then you just, like, later. Yeah, but there's also another point level of this, which is that you could stay, if it is undamaged, you could choose to stay in the area of engagement because of the fact that if it's undamaged, it gives your opponent no points. Interesting. So, but if it is damaged, it gives your opponent fifty percent of points. So, if you have a damaged plane, you probably want to fly it off the board if you can. Yes. But if you don't have a damaged plane and you think you can maneuver your way in such a tricky way that perhaps you will, you pull some stuff, but I also pull some stuff and decided to go over here, <laughs> way away from you, then it'd be like, well, I deny you those points, but also I'm still on the board, so I don't have to worry about pulling some shenanigans to get off the board. Yeah, which will probably, these fighters can probably handle something like that, but that would make sense if you're, you know, with a larger aircraft that's yeah. not as maneuverable that maybe can't just pull, a, you know, pull a 180 and just yeah. yeet off the board. But also, another thing that I just thought of just now is that if I wanted to, like for instance, you went here and I went here, let's say somehow you couldn't manage to get behind me quite, but I managed to get behind you. That means I can still shoot your plane, which means I would damage it, which means it would give me points at the end of the game. But my plane would be undamaged, so it wouldn't give you points. That's sneaky. <laughs> so that matters. So actually deciding if you want to stick around in that uh, disengagement that disengagement turn, which is essentially the last turn of any yeah, given game. it is the last turn. It's the last turn. Like, once you hit that disengagement yeah, turn, Get as many points as you can and get out. Yeah, get, get your points and get out, or just get out, or yeah. whatever you think you need to do to win. Um, or go nuts and try to down as many enemy aircraft as you humanly can yeah. before they can make the points back if you're in a good position. So that's the rundown on how to play Aeronautica Imperialis. So hopefully after watching this video you kind of understand the rules a bit better and you'll be able to, you know, once you get your box and you get your set, you can start playing immediately.